Today I'm going to help you guys get set up with the optimal settings for any NVIDIA graphics card. However, I'm going to be showcasing this on a 3080. This will be virtually the same settings for any of the 30 series cards, even most of the 20 series cards, but literally this will work with any NVIDIA graphics card. So we're going to start out by getting optimized drivers, and then we're going to go step by step through all the settings to make sure you're getting the highest frames per second and the most consistent performance out of your graphics card. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, share my screen over here. The very first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you have the most up-to-date drivers. So you are gonna to go to NVIDIA forward slash download, and this will be linked in the description below. You're gonna pick your graphics card, which most likely, which most likely if you have the consumer gamer cards, they're gonna be the GeForce, Titans, more of their productivity workstation cards. And then you also have a Quattro and a bunch of other more niche cards, but most likely you're gonna have either a 30 series, a 20 series, or maybe you're on still like a 1080 or something. Your 10 series is down here. Also, if you have a laptop, you're gonna select notebook here. So for me, I'm on the 30 series. And then it's gonna have all the subsets in that family. So I have a 3080. You know, 99% of you guys watching this are on the most up-to-date Windows 10, which is 64-bit. And then you're gonna select GRD or Game Ready Driver and select your primary language, which most likely if you're watching this video and I'm speaking English, it's probably English for you guys. Hit search. It's gonna pop up with your driver pack right here. It is um, a rather large file at 631 megabytes. I would highly recommend Installing this to your actual boot drive is that most likely is an SSD or an NVMe. And since this is a very important graphics driver file, you want this folder installed uh, with your program files on your actual boot drive. Now, when you, when you download this, you're gonna pick an extraction path, which like I said, you probably want that on your C drive or your fastest drive. It's gonna run a system check, seeing what hardware you have installed. And you can install just the drivers, which is a good option if you don't want to use any of the GeForce Experience features. Now, me personally, I actually do enjoy the GeForce Experience. Uh, the reasons being for that, one, you get optimized game settings. So basically, you'll be able to choose, do you prefer uh, a specific frame rate? Like for me, 144 hertz, which is my monitor's native refresh rate. And it'll basically give you the best graphic settings for that game while still maintaining that frame rate or you can pick and choose do you want you know graphical fidelity you know the most beautiful ray tracing graphics or do you want a high frame rate for me i like to strike a fine balance but i would definitely prioritize frame rate over sheer graphical power you also do get nvidia highlights which is a really cool feature if you're a youtuber or streamer because it will record your you know triple kills or crazy things you do in a lot of the major AAA titles like modern warfare fortnite etc uh, apex legends I think Apex Legends has NVIDIA highlights. I'm not sure on that one. You'll save all those clips to a folder and it'll just be like 10 second clips around the craziest action. So between those two features, I like to have the GeForce experience, not to mention you can actually update your drivers through that program instead of having to go back to this website right here and research for your graphics card. You can just update it from the uh, GeForce application on your uh, PC. So I prefer that instead of express. I always recommend when you're installing any kind of program to go to custom or advanced That lets you pick and choose what you want installed and most importantly here um, I do like all this stuff checked here But you want to check this right here perform a clean installation Which restores all Nvidia settings to the default value and removes any profiles you have Created so basically what that's gonna do I already have up-to-date drivers so I'm gonna close that but what that's gonna do is that's going to remove any previous drivers in the folder that you're installing it to. So hopefully that's where you had your drivers installed before. Uh, so that way you don't have double drivers running, confusing your PC or anything like that. And it's basically going to reset all your settings to default, which since we're doing this tutorial video here is probably optimal. So you can set everything up uh, fresh, fresh start. So once you have GeForce Experience on your PC, uh, me personally, I prefer to have it down here on the toolbar. All the programs that I use quite frequently for gaming, mining, streaming, whatever I like to have down there. And this is what the GeForce Experience look like, looks like. If you click on drivers over here, uh, you'll see I am up to date with the latest drivers, 4.461.92, which was released uh, four days ago. So this is the most up to date driver. You can always check for updates right here. Yep, you had the latest drivers, fantastic. And I will do a separate video going over this program where you can set up um, the overlay and where you can set up NVIDIA highlights right here, um, which I do recommend you guys using if you wanna make some really cool clips and whatnot. But again, that's all we need to do here is just make sure we have the up-to-date drivers. Now, for the actual settings inside the NVIDIA experience, you're gonna right click on your desktop and you're gonna to go to NVIDIA control panel over here. And I'm gonna walk you guys through what all these settings mean. Starting down here at the bottom, 
you're going to have all of your monitors here, so you might just have one. Um, I personally have two monitors and a 40-inch TV that I utilize as a third monitor over there. And by default, use video player settings is checked for all these. You want to make sure that you're using NVIDIA settings. I do this for all my monitors, uh, but the one I definitely care about is right here, my primary gaming monitor right in front of me. Use NVIDIA settings, so this way, if you launch different video players or applications, it's not using their settings, it's going to use the settings that you set in this driver menu here. You can go ahead and leave this, bo leave this box checked. Color settings, again, for all your monitors, you want to go with the NVIDIA settings. I would recommend coming down here to advanced and changing all these from limited to full if they do offer it. And then hitting apply down here at the bottom right. And what that's going to do is give you the full dynamic range. So whether you have an HDR monitor or not, it's going to give you more vibrant colors and more of them. Color and gamma, I would leave all these as is. You don't want to mess with any of this stuff because you're not going to be seeing a true natural image as it was meant to be seen. It's going to look either too blue or too green, uh, or it's going to look too contrasty or whitewashed. Just leave, leave it alone, boys. Now, in order to unlock this menu here, you are going to go up here to desktop and you're going to click enable developer settings. And it's going to have a little pop up where you are going to allow access to GPU performance counters for all users. Now, this isn't just for all users. So if you have you know, for me personally, I'm the only user of this desktop, but this will make it to where a lot of the settings we're about to set up here will actually apply to all games and applications. So definitely want that set up. So set up multiple displays. You can do this in the window settings just by right clicking and going to display settings. However, I recommend doing this inside the actual driver of your graphics card, considering all your monitors are plugged into the ports in the back of your GPU. And by doing this on the drivers, it makes sure that these settings take effect in all applications, which is good. You can set up your primary monitor over here. You can adjust the orientation of your monitors. Now up here for setup G-Sync. If you have a G-Sync or V-Sync enabled monitor, mine is uh, V-Sync. You're going to leave this box checked and enable for full screen mode. Adjust desktop size and position over here. I recommend going over here to no scaling, at least on your primary monitor that you game on, because you're probably playing at the native resolution of your monitor anyway, 1080, 1440, or 4K. So there's no reason for scaling to be on there, and a lot of times this is incredibly GPU intensive, and it'll actually cause a pretty good little frame rate hit. Not good, not good at all, boys. So I would recommend no scaling. Now, if you do have scaling on because you play something like retro games that have black borders around them, again, if you're using something like RetroArc, which is what I use for my retro games, that software automatically does all the scaling in that program, so it's going to make it the native resolution of your monitor. But if for some reason, maybe you're a CS player and you want to be at that 4x3 um, aspect ratio or something, then you can leave aspect ratio on, and I would recommend changing this to GPU. So it's us using your GPU rather than just using whatever uh, the GPU or CPU. But I personally, no scaling is what you want. There's really no purpose for it and it causes a nasty frame rate hit. All right, set up digital audio. We can go ahead and skip over that. View HDCP status. We can go ahead and switch up, st sp skip over that. My goodness gracious, ladies, I'm tongue tied. And then uh, rotate display over here. The purpose of this here is if you are one of the guys that runs a monitor for chat only, you're a streamer and you have basically a vertical monitor that has your chat running through it or something like that, then you can flip your monitor vertically instead of horizontally or portrait instead of landscape, if you will. Adjust desktop color settings. Now, this is a big one, boys. That's what she said. Do so you want to do all these settings for all of your monitors? But again, the one that you really probably want to focus on would be your primary gaming monitor and whatnot. Leave this box unchecked. Color channel, of course, leave it on all channels or else it's going to only be looking at the spectrum of red, green, or blue. And we want the full spectrum here, honey. I would leave all these default. Now down here at digital vibrance, what this does is makes all of your colors pop a little bit more, which can be very, very beneficial in competitive first person shooters or BRs uh, because your enemies kind of pop from the screen a little bit. You can see character models a lot cleaner, not to mention, in my opinion, just bumping it from 50 to about 60 or so makes games look a little bit more rich and vibrant color-wise, which is great. You can squeeze out a little more graphical performance out of your monitor, or at least it seems that way to my corneas. Now, some people I see crank this shit all the way to 100, and as you can see on the little reference, and as you can see on the reference over here, it is adjusting in real time. I, like I said, like to leave it at 60 for my primary monitor, as well as all my secondaries as well. And go ahead and click apply anytime you make any of these changes, guys. Change resolution, this is incredibly important as well. You would be shocked how many people buy a 144 or 250 hertz monitor and never actually change the refresh rate in Windows to where they're getting 60 
frames per second on like a $400 monitor, which is, you hate to see it. You genuinely do. That's all you can say about that. So you're going to um, select each monitor individually. Now, these are both 60 hertz, uh, but my, my gaming monitor is 144 hertz. You're going to choose the native resolution, which for mine is a 1440. If, if you have a 4K, it'll go all the way up to that. Choose your native resolution. And then by default, 60 hertz will be selected anytime you plug in a new monitor or even install a fresh copy of Windows. So 144 hertz, please, and hit apply. Then also down here for each monitor, you want to use NVIDIA color settings. Make sure this is at highest, uh, RGB and full and hit apply. We're really getting somewhere, boys. Now over here in Configure Sound, PhysX, I would leave this box unchecked. And then by default, this is Auto Select, um, which a lot of times when you're running a program, it's going to go ahead and target your CPU. Now, I would select your graphics card. Even if you don't have a 3080, most likely your graphics card is going to be able to do 3D graphical processing a lot more powerful than the onboard graphical uh, unit inside your CPU. Because yes, CPUs do have a built-in graphics engines, but... You don't want to utilize that. Use your graphics card. It's a graphics card. Let it handle graphics intensive processes. And this was very beneficial for me because when it was on auto select, I would notice when I'm um, doing 3D video editing or I'm doing some 4K video editing, uh, not necessarily rendering the video, but dragging in clips and editing them. It was not using my GPU at all. So this helped alleviate a lot of my workload on Adobe Premiere, which is huge for somebody that video edits. Now over here in Manage 3D Settings, we're going to go through all these together. Don't worry too much about program settings because again, since we are since we are going to set all of these to be used um, to, to target your driver settings, all, all programs and games and applications should automatically use the driver settings. You shouldn't need to adjust each individual program. That would take forever and it's completely unnecessary. So over here... Image sharpening, I would leave this off. The only thing that AMD graphics cards do better than NVIDIA, in my opinion, would be sharpening, image sharpening. And even still, I would leave it off because it gives you this kind of not natural, it gives you this artificial pumped in sharpening that a lot of times gives jagged edges and looks pretty busted. So ambient inclusion, ambient, I always call it inclusion. We're all inclusive here. Ambient occlusion. Uh, go ahead and leave that bad boy off. As it says, you may experience a decrease in graphical performance increases realism with less impact on performance. Just leave it off, trust me. All right, your AF or your anastropic filtering, I would leave that application controlled so that way each individual game, you can go ahead and set that up because every single game in the graphical section is gonna have, um, I shouldn't say every single game, older games didn't, but anything after like 2010, you're gonna have um, this option in there where you can specifically choose it for that game. Anti-aliasing, I personally don't like anti-aliasing at all. I don't like anti-aliasing. I don't think it makes the image look any prettier and you do take a small in, small frames per second and input input delay hit. So leave it off. Anti-aliasing gamma correction on. Anti-aliasing mode, application controlled. This one's blacked out because we can't adjust it. Transparency off, background application max frame rate off. Uh, CUDA GPUs, leave that at all. Now, DSR factors over here. If for some reason you want to... Uh, be able to play 1440 or 4K on a lower resolution monitor, for example, a 1080p. Obviously, it's not going to be that native resolution, but it'll try and squeeze in those extra pixels into your less uh, resolution monitor. So if you want 4K, it'd be 4X from 1080p to 4K. It's times four resolution, so you would check that. Or if you want 2K, which is uh, 1440, you're going to check that box as well. My God, my eye is watering like crazy. Must be ocular herpes or something. Low latency mode, if you have a G-Sync or a FreeSync monitor, go ahead and put this at ultra. It will increase um, input delay, but it's like by one millisecond, which you're not really going to notice anyway. And it will give you um, extra frames per second, like four to five frames per second for one millisecond of input delay. So I would leave that on. However, if you do not have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, my eye is going crazy right now. If you don't have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, I'm like digging my cordy out here then you can go ahead and leave this off. But I like to leave it on ultra as I do have a FreeSync monitor. Max frame rate, I like to leave this off so it'll just coordinate with my FreeSync monitor. However, if you want to set it at, you know, 144 or whatever your monitor's refresh rate is, I would go three to four clicks uh, below your max frame rate. So if you have 144 hertz monitor, go 141. Monitor technology, this will display what your monitor technology is if you have it. Um, if you if you don't have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, it'll just say fixed refresh. 
but um, if you do have one, it'll say G-Sync compatible. Um, Multi-frame sampled off. Okay, OpenGL rendering. This is also very important, especially like I mentioned earlier for editing videos. Auto select, it was just choosing whatever the hell it wants. You wanna force your GPU, your beefy old 3080 or 3090 or whatever you have to be the OpenGL rendering. So yes, choose that. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Uh, preferred refresh rate, highest available, of course. Why would you do anything else? Shader cache on, texturing filtering on, texture filtering negative LOD bias allow, uh, texture filtering quality. You want this at high performance. These don't really make a huge difference from what I've seen, but high performance, uh, high quality and performance don't really seem to make any kind of difference, but high performance will give you a noticeable frame rate boost, which is good. Uh, Trilinear optimization on, threaded optimization on, triple buffering off, vertical free, uh, vertical sync or V-sync on. And then these are for VR only, but so if you don't have a, a VR headset, it's not gonna matter for anything, but generally just leave these at one and off. And if for some reason you messed up these settings along the way and it completely screwed something up, you just come over here to restore and it'll restore all of your driver settings back to default. Adjust image settings with preview. You want to, uh, by default, let the 3D app decide. You want to choose let the advanced 3D image settings um, and select that. Whew. Well, we got through it, guys. That is about it. I know it was a lot of settings to get through, and it probably isn't the most exciting topic to cover in the world, but those settings definitely will squeeze out a couple of extra frames per second, and more importantly than that is give you more consistency. Instead of having to adjust all these settings in each game and stuff like that, obviously you still want to go through your graphics tab in every game, but most of these settings, as you'll see when you launch a game, are now defaulted to the driver's specific settings that we set up here. So. That is awesome in my book. It took us about 10 minutes and your GPU is now optimized. You'll never have to make these settings ever again. If you enjoyed this video, it was beneficial for you guys. Helped you squeeze a couple of frame rates out. Go ahead and smack that like button. Helps this video to get seen by more people, which helps me to grow my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of tutorials helping you guys get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as news in the gaming community and industry. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.